Nice. Hello. <laughs> <All right. laughs> hi, it's me. It's CGV, and Raren is here. Say hi, Raren. Oh, hey. You have to pet his cat. She's no, she's in my frame. She's in my frame. She's, <laughs> like, she's just on the couch what, behind me. What's your cat's name? Her name is Moon. All right. Ra All right. So, <laughs> hi, it's me. It's CGB. We're here with Moon and someone named Raren to uh, rate and review legends cards. Cards from the that are not legendary necessarily, but they are from the set legends. Are you hyped to rate and try to guess the price of some old cards? Yeah, absolutely. Especially at the last one. It went so well last time. I, we, I, we, I, we... I remember I actually have a it framed on my wall. I'm just not going to turn my camera so you guys can't see it. It literally says I did perfect in the last CGB video. Not, <laughs> not prices, though. And like <laughs> not prices. <laughs> it's hard to do well in prices, but that's all right. That's part of the fun. So the we're going to get the expansion stuff right. Legends. This was what? released on june 1st in 1994. Oh my god were, were you like alive nope i was 1996. <laughs> oh my goodness so years. we're talking real boomer magic cards here yeah this this set was the first set to introduce multicolored cards which would nice. go on to be a serious staple for magic every set has them now and if you i know that you've talked about this uh you're a hearthstone player in hearthstone the ability to like kind of smash classes together or create like your own mix of classes uh, would be pretty cool right it would be the greatest thing on the planet also they've done dual class cards before and they have been very successful uh but they didn't introduce dual class cards until 2020 uh so it hasn't been that and they don't do it too often either i listen I, behind the scenes i have been begging the developers to give us something that lets me do dual class cards thank you for listening if any developers are watching I was I was with you at BlizzCon. We sat next to a developer. You TED talked them hard for like for Listen, a really long I time. Listen, I so bad. Okay, <laughs> you, you were pitching like an elevator, like Silicon Valley okay, tech well, like, now startup I'm gonna go on a guy. Bit of a rant here. Now I'm gonna go on a rant here. But listen, uh, it, if it they're begins. so successful in Magic, right? If people love them, they continue printing dual class cards in Magic. Why haven't they done it in Hearthstone? Let me make a deck with Warlock and Rogue. And let me see what happens. Sorry, I'm gonna. Go. Right, cut him off. Cut him off. Show him a card. I'll just stick a card in his <laughs> face here. That'll help. So here's your first card. We're going to start off with some of the multicolor legends for you to evaluate. Okay. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, I sent it to the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just not said anything and just see where you are. <laughs> no, just keep waiting. It's fine. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot how ugly these cards look. Ugly? <sighs> they just hurt my eyes looking at it. These <laughs> belong in a museum. These do are they? relics of our past. What is they it? really do. Is this Dakon? Dakin? D Maybe. D ba black Blade. D Black Blade. Two neutral, <laughs> one black, two blue, one white. The stars blow equal oh, okay like the stats okay the stats blow equal the number of lands you control oh so in order for you to play this card you need what six mana which you know in turn basically means six lands so when you play this card on average it's a six six for six that's not very good this card does scale and in magic i i was reminded of this recently because I, I started playing magic again uh your stats are you get fully healed at the end of your upkeep right or end of combat forget what it is the, yes the creature does yeah. not keep damage so from turn to turn that's a big deal um and the more you summon because you get like there's instant lands right i'm not sure if it was during this kind of set but your opponent can go for a like a an attack and then you instant summon a land and it gets bigger and then they get absolutely rolled because they're like what the hell i am unaware of instant summoning lands okay I just, listen i was dreaming big right um <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to chat too but much. Imagine if that was in the game. I'm just saying it would go hard. The, I, I will say there are cards that there are spells you can cast, like instants that can potentially put a land onto the battlefield, but lands themselves can't be played as instants. Okay, so now were those kind of spells that you just described in the game during the set? No. Oh. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. 
I wouldn't really want to play this card just because of the fact that it's kind of just like a vanilla creature that scales, I guess, a little bit more every single turn you can play a land. But by the time you play this, I feel like there's way better stuff you can do. Because what is this? This is 6-6? Six, six? six mana for 6-6? Six, six? That's not good enough. I feel like there's better stuff in Magic. Uh, almost guaranteed, right? And you show me like last... This is the set after the last one you showed me, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, this card's bad. Final answer. Uh, you are you are correct. Woo! I I was wondering if you'd remember kind of where our meta lives at this point, where it's very hard to get a good creature, and it's very easy to get a lot of ways to deal with creatures, and magic is mostly about card advantage and kind of grindy win cons. Creatures themselves didn't end games very often before this set came out, and there was a lot of interest right away in the legendary creatures, but this was not one of the better ones. However, the one thing I want to tell you, with the introduction of legendary creatures, so um, we know a little bit about Commander. In the future, Commander, the rise of Commander as a format, would mean that legendary creatures kind of get this second life because they're the champion of your deck. You start with them in your command zone, and you can play them every game, and you build your deck around their identity. Hmm. The other thing about Legends, it's a new card type at the time, you could only have one of the legend on the field at the time so okay like your opponent couldn't have a deck and black blade as well there's some history to the legend rule actually comments go ahead and write me a novel about exact the exact <laughs> history of the legend rule i believe the way it worked at this phase was if i played a dakin and you had a dakin you could not play your dakin what oh wow in the future in the future you would play a Dakin and I would have to sacrifice my Dakin. That was a legend rule. There was also a period of time where if I played a Dakin and you played a Dakin, both Dakins died. Like the legend, there could only be one or none or something. I don't know. It was bizarre. The way okay. the legend rule works now is each player can only control one. Makes sense. But okay. back then, I'm pretty sure you could just only have one on the field at all. I'm surprised they changed the rules so often for that. I, I, it's, I mean, it has been like 30 years. That's, I guess that's fair. I, I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't think of it. Like, imagine buying this new set and you're like, oh, I can't wait to play with Dakin. But like, and then your opponent plays, you're like, oh, I just wasted all this money. And now I can't even play the legendary cards. Like what? <laughs> if there's one thing I plan to prove to you with these old school videos, it's that the player experience wasn't a very high priority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. Dakin was potentially big, tough dude with sword, but big, tough dude with sword, not good enough for back in the day. Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm, I'm calling So, it. let's see if this what was good enough. What the fuck is that? Oh, I know this guy. He's the big dragon in Magic Arena in the tutorial. Uh, Nicole Bolas, right? That's his name. Uh, two neutral mana, two blue, two black, two red. Flying an opponent damaged by this card must discard entire hand. Ignore this effect if opponent has no cards left in hand. Pay one blue, one black, one red during your upkeep. Or this card is buried. What does that? What does buried mean? It goes directly to the graveyard, and you can't regenerate it or save it with other effects. Uh, nowadays, it would be templated as sacrifice it. Okay, so but when your upkeep happens, you get all your mana back, right? You untap your lands and you, yeah, can use them again for a turn cycle. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. So, so you have to hit them without your opponent blocking this card. And during this time, minions weren't very good. This is very expensive, very expensive. But if you do get to swing with this, that means your opponent can only have one card ever just because of the fact that they have to like, they get to draw a card on their turn. But I don't know. I feel it's really bad just because it's so expensive. And probably by that point in the game, I don't think your opponent's going to have a lot of cards to begin with. Unless, the, like, actually, you did show me a lot of really good draw. Oh, my God. See, now this is weird because I, I think he's such a significant part of Magic's lore that I feel like if they printed a card for this character, like, he would have to be good. But I don't know, man. Like, this is, I feel like it's way too slow. In Hearthstone, like, what is this? Eight mana. If I got to attack your face, you discard your whole hand. Like, that's nuts. This is flying, too, I guess. So your opponent does need another flying minion, or I forgot what the other mechanic is to block a flying minion. Reach. But reach. Um, 
God, I don't, this is tough because I, I don't know how much it really matters to discard your opponent's hand at that time. Because if, if you're going to hit seven, if you're going to hit seven face, you're probably already winning the game. I, I don't know. I think this is a win more card. I probably think this is not very good. You are very correct. Yes. This is a win more card that is not very good. It was <laughs> probably the most popular of what's called the Elder Dragon Cycle. There are five of these and they each represent a three color uh it, they would go on to be called not wedge shard they represent a three color shard three different colors playing together um and there were so there were five of these dragons this was the best one that captured the most imagination but still at the end of the day too expensive and not very good people definitely tried to force it and as cards were printed in magic there's a card called shallow grave which says take the top creature in your graveyard put it into play give it haste it can attack this turn then sacrifice it that card was only two mana so there were a lot of things that you would use shallow grave to cheat into play to get their effect some people did that with bolus but when this card was new when legends was the new set this was a card people tried to force but was not actually good okay now we didn't we didn't do price guess i was gonna we say didn't. that to you i was gonna say yeah it. we missed it we missed it uh let's let's revisit dakin really quick okay because dakin sets a good baseline many of these cards have been reprinted i will let you know in any time it's reprinted because that's only fair uh dakin has been reprinted how much do you think an original legends print of Dak and black blade and especially with legendary creatures commander was a factor i would expect something like this that's been reprinted a bunch of times to not be you know more than ten dollars but commanders from the first set with legends it might might help oh, a little okay so these are more expensive than that but it seems like they're not super expensive let's go with 150. 150 for Dakin. yeah how about $81? Didn't quite break 100. Didn't okay. quite break 100. He, he isn't the most popular of the commanders either. So, all right, we'll take that information, cha-ching, cha-ching, <laughs> and we'll apply it to Nicole Bolas, who did capture for at least a period of time the hearts and minds. Uh, fun fact about Commander. Commander as a format was originally developed around, it was called Elder Dragon Highlander. It was called that because the people who originally invented the format would each pick one of the Elder Dragon Legends. See on Nicole Bolas where it says Elder Dragon Legend? Yeah. So that the original commanders were the Elder Dragon Legends. Each player would pick one of them. They would build with only the colors represented on the card, and that would be their commander. So in ways, Nicole Bolas is one of the fathers of the format, one of the first commanders ever used. Shout out to Nicole Bolas, who also looks very, very nice reading his book. Oh yeah, he's he's very grumpy though. If you ever meet him on arena, he says a uh, cool voice lines. I outsmarted you eons ago. <laughs> Holy shit. Is that him? That was me. Are you I, impressed? I remember kicking his ass in the tutorial though. Yeah, uh, I, I, it, you're very talented. Thank you. Thank you. He said I was like the best duelist he's ever seen. I don't know if he said that to you. <laughs> it's nothing like beating Mono Red, is it? <laughs> oh, it, you know what? It does feel really good to be mono red. One of the best feelings in the world, especially when they misplay, it feels really good. Ooh, it's, yes. It gets me excited. An immediate re-Q. Uh, for price, by the way, for this one, I'm gonna go with 250. 250 for an original Nicole Bolas. Yeah. I forgot to mention it has been reprinted, but that's fine. Uh, you did good anyway. Uh, it's uh, I'm it's 185. Okay, I'll take yep, it. Yep, 185. Pretty good. I bet it's been 250 at a few times in its history. It By the nice, way, just nice looking card. And for card market, like like the market was at a like peak during pandemic and it's kind of trailing down. So I bet during pandemic, this was 250. Okay, I'll take it. Not okay, so I've, I've showed you two unplayable legends. <laughs> uh, here is another one. Another legend. Soul Kanar, the swap. The, oh my God, what did I just say? The swap? The Swamp King. Two neutral, one red, one black, one blue. Uh, this card controller gains one life each time a black spell is cast and it's a five, five. Okay, but like, here's the thing, right? You have to do one red and one blue. Like this is, this is insane. Like you, you're, the, the way your lands have to line up, I feel like it, this is just not worth the, the actual condition here. Also, how, okay. 
that has this always been a rule because I, I noticed this in arena yesterday is that you can go above 20 life like there's no cap Correct. so you can keep you can go like 21 22 23 at this point in time yep okay and it's one black spell but oh no control their gains i was gonna say whenever why is the text worded like this too it's kind of like really <laughs> weird like how it just says swamp walk and then it just moves down because i guess swamp walks actually what the effect is called but then whatever. uh no swamp walk is something else would you like to know what swamp walk is oh is it a mechanic it is oh okay yeah that's probably important for the analysis here because i'm gonna it, say it, this card is bad until you said that uh, okay are you ready yeah what is it swamp walk means if your opponent controls a swamp you cannot block this it's oh. like it sneaks through the opponent's swamp and hits them in the face okay so okay hold on that makes this a lot better uh wow okay hold on a second because you're showing me all these like multicolored legends, which means if I had to guess, people were definitely trying those out, like the the multiple lands and such. And I'm sure there's like more supporting cards that wants you to play for multiple lands. So the chance of your opponent having a swamp is pretty likely, I would imagine, uh, which means this is like a free five damage every single turn unless they can actually interact with it. I mean, that's better than the other two. Because it, it's a win can it's two sorts of win condition the life gain and the five damage to go. I mean this one's okay, it's better than the other two. The question <laughs> is it actually good? Because <laughs> it's also cheaper. That's a bigger deal. I mean, the con is not that expensive, but this is. A, I'm gonna say this was probably pretty good. I think the ability to like gain life is just very underrated. Probably at this time, there doesn't seem like there's a lot of cards that actually did that, and it's a free five damage as well. And then you could block whenever you need to. I guess it taps when you attack still, right? Yes. No, I still think it's good. It's probably it's better than the other two, so I'm gonna go with it's good. Nicely done. Yes. Uh Sol Kinar, the Swamp King, was actually played and a decent card. Uh much to the surprise of many people. It is not a great card by any kind of modern like standards, but in its day, when you're talking about the creatures that you could play, we showed you Juzam Jin during Arabian Nights, that was four mana for a five, five. Right. If your opponent had the Jin and you had the Soul Kinar, like the, you could, you were, your five, five was unblockable, but you were gaining life when they cast black spells and when you cast black spells. So you could often win that race, even though you were a mana more expensive. Yeah, that uh, black was a really popular color. Uh, so this yeah. gained life when the opponents cast spells as well. And it was just kind of a, like oddly a decent card compared to cards like this this is not a card for you to evaluate i will tell you it's trash right now but this is like it's really funny that they created this set called legends and then they release cards like jedit o ojenin <laughs> and it's seven mana for a generic five five like most of the legends were terrible yeah the fact that it doesn't even have like an effect either that's just like flavor text as well right i will yeah. say my god that is a scary looking tiger thing the cards were really popular because the art and the multicoloredness was something people really wanted it, like it gave them reasons to try these combinations of colors but most of them just aren't good and it's a very strange characteristic of a set that introduced legends that most of the cards are so bad that soul Kinar, the swamp king is one of the rare exceptions and i'm impressed that you got it because i wanted to show you these creatures up front to set the stage for maybe some of the other cards so that you'll understand how it's all going but I, you're, you're you're on top of it you got this i will say because you showed me that one after the two other ones it was just more of like comparing it like that yep. it, it can't be the worst thing in the world if, if i'm comparing it to the other two so I, i'll still take it I'll still take it. Too easy? Should mm. I? <laughs> well, if it's too easy, guess what? Here comes the okay. price guessing. Right. Right. Um, now, the real question is, would this card be more valuable than Bolas? I don't know. I don't think Good so. Good question. This card has been reprinted. I don't know. Let's go for like, let's go for 100 hundred dollars for Solkinar the Swamp King Legends Edition yeah 
51 dollars oh. 51 it didn't stand the test of time nobody really wants to play this anymore there's such better cards how now. is the con it, worth more than that though I mean, like, so with... Dakan is an interesting, like, weird commander card in the fact that there are very few Esper cards. Dakan's like a green card. There are a ton of cards in green that say power and toughness equal the number of lands you control. There are almost none in Esper. So it's a bizarre building experiment for people who like having a lot of lands but don't like playing green, if that makes sense. It's, okay. a, it's unique in its role. I got you. I got what you're saying. Um, what the hell is Esper? <laughs> Oh, good question. Esper is the it's the code-ish name, the shard name for the color combination of blue, black, and white. Okay. I'm just gonna call it multicolored boy. I don't know. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell you what Grixis <laughs> and Bant colors are because you won't remember it anyway. And the comments oh. just have at it. <laughs> there's there's absolutely no way I would remember them. hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right. I am going to show you another critter but then we're gonna move on to some other fun card types okay Ooh, more fun card types right what the hell is this okay so this is a completely different color so this one's actually all red so that means that it actually changes to a red background see that pickup right there that was crazy good job dude look at the text on this card what the hell okay one mana three red tempest i think that's a e or is that a g uh it's an e effort 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 Tempest Efreet. Sure, we'll go with that. Um, I think that the little T is tap, correct? Correct. Okay. Pick a card. So you tap, you pick a card random from your opponent's hand and place it in yours. Bury this card in your opponent's graveyard. The change in ownership is permanent. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Play as an interrupt, but opponent may prevent effect by paying 10 life points or conceding the game before the card is switched is chosen. If this is a wait, I'm sorry. Are they saying like you get to you're you're now the owner of that card? Like, they are. Th so you're basically if my card is worth five hundred dollars and you're yeah. about to steal it from me, I just have to like pay 10 life points or concede so you don't steal that card from me. Who's yeah. enforcing that? <laughs> Like what? Bro, I would shake the guy in the parking lot if he thought he was gonna take my five hundred dollar card. What? Okay, sorry. If this Okay, sorry, play as an interrupt, but opponent may prevent effect by paying ten left points or conceding the game before it can be switched as chosen. If this is done, Tempest if uh, uh, effort is buried. Effects that prevent or redirect damage may not be used to counter this loss of life. Remove this card from the deck if not playing for anti. Okay, so if your opponent doesn't agree to the terms and conditions of this card, you have to remove it. That is... <laughs> what? Okay, I, I, I put this in because I wanted to do a little... I wanted to share the, the rule of anti with you. Okay. Most people are unfamiliar with this if they started Magic outside of the 90s. And I think it's fun to share with the audience. In Magic was designed to be played for anti. It was in the original rule book. The first thing you do in every game, you bring your deck, opponent brings theirs, shuffle, cut the opponent's deck, flip the top card. You are playing for that card. The winner takes all. Oh, okay. Both players are supposed to anti oh. one card every game and winner takes all. That is incredibly spicy. That is how magic was meant to be played as Richard Garfield intended is the meme that people use because he designed the game. Um, so <laughs> there are cards that specifically relate to anti. I doubt I'll show you other ones in the future. They're just banned all over the place. Um, and because of that, they're kind of just little side note to magic history, but they do things like you may switch the anti card with any card in your deck and you have to anti an additional card to get this effect. But yeah, there's about 10 cards in magic history that are just basically messing with the stakes of the game and who gets what cards when you win. What do you think playing for anti would be like as a new player? Uh, it depends who I'm going against and what cards we're talking about here. If the cards were given to me or they're from like a commander, like pre-built pre -built deck, I think the the stakes matter a lot less but if i'm playing like my command like if i'm playing like what's his name let's go, let's go back in time here for a second to the con right and you yeah. think you're stealing my the con 
for example, with Anti, my God, I would be infuriated. Yeah. I wouldn't play the game. Like I, I wouldn't, I think like I'm not personally a gambler. Um, I don't bet like ever. So the thought process of like, oh, I just want to play a fun game of magic. And then you go to the table and the guy's like, what's your ante? And then you flip your card and you saw that. I would just get up and leave. There's no way. I, yeah. Grab your stuff and run. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> just don't play the game. Yeah. Uh, like, no, you can't make me you over, you know, from my cold dead hand, you will take this card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the parking lot. I, I, and that honestly was the experience you know i started out we read the rule book my sister and i and we played for anti 90 percent of my anti games were against my sister and yeah i just go into her room when she wasn't home and steal my card back <laughs> fuck you you don't get to keep this it's my card Dude, that's incredible i i couldn't imagine i really couldn't imagine it's it's also i think it's very smart from other card games that they didn't pick up that role is that is mm -hmm. that is too scary dude i couldn't even imagine especially because cards are so expensive when you're young like buying a booster yes. pack feels like i'm i'm literally paying for a down payment on my house when i was like eight or whatever right so i couldn't imagine pulling a good card and then you have to put that up for stakes dude i would lose my mind that would be atrocious now at least it was your sister because you know same household i'm sure you can get your card back but against a random opponent like it it becomes so much more stressful unfun you really lose oh. what makes magic exciting i would imagine because you're just it's too also worried. it's also a trading card game right so can you imagine losing the game maybe some cheap salty ali from cairo bs right <laughs> and then the person takes your card looks at you and goes what's it worth to you i have like 20 of these but you know what just are you gonna give me just, for it just to taunt you uh, that's crazy if, i I have never I have never been able to really fully wrap my head about why it was a part of the game and it's definitely not a part of the game now. I just wanted to like I really so, want to share it with you. I listen, okay. I'm going to take a very interesting perspective here, which is have you ever watched the Yu-Gi-Oh anime before? No. Do you, do you have any idea how the Yu-Gi-Oh anime is ran? I saw the very first episode okay. with blue eyes, white dragon. And Basically, that's it. there's a concept in the show that like if you lost, you got sent to the shadow realm, right? So you you add like it from an audience perspective, it adds a little bit more stakes. You're more invested, even though it's like a children's show, like you're way more invested to see who wins the battle, because, you know, if you got sent to the shadow realm, you're like, oh, shit, like what? This is a big deal now, right? So I'm thinking from that perspective, like from an audience perspective, if they wanted the game to be more exciting for like people who are not invested into the card game themselves, to be like, oh, like you hear the, the murmurings from the, you know, picture this, right? You hear the murmurings in the audience. So like, yo, that card's worth a hundred dollars. He's gonna lose it, oh my God. And then the guy who's like, doesn't give a fuck. is like, holy shit, actually a hundred dollars? And now they're invested, right? Yeah, So yes, like, that's I think, true. I think that would be the perspective. Now, from a game design perspective, dude, that was, that's the stupidest decision I've ever heard in my life. Because if, if that's the, if there was, there wasn't a card game really before Magic, right? Like that was the card game to play. Yeah. The first TCG. Yeah. Collectible so card game. It's weird that they thought that that was necessary to put in because they want people to get into this like niche. But why would I want to get into this niche if I'm about to risk something that's worth like, you know, a pretty substantial like price point. It's, it's very, very interesting. I think it's from like an audience perspective, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what, has he ever spoke about it now? And then like, I'm sure I'm sure it's somewhere online. I've never like read anything about that they've said about the development of anti, but that is interesting. Maybe you can do the history of anti. Someone video. someone in the comments write a write an essay for me, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Point us in the right direction. <laughs> uh, anyways, this card, by the way, in case you were curious about that, I think it's bad. Um, unless you're playing for anti. Like I feel like it's really hard to evaluate this because you're you're probably playing this card specifically because of the anti rule. So if that doesn't apply, then like this card is just unplayable. I'm sure you can come up with all kinds of terrifying scenarios where they played this and oh my God, what did I do? But yeah, this card was banned in all forms of competitive <laughs> play because anti itself was banned in all forms of competitive play, yeah. which is in itself a weird development. Um, financially speaking, this card got reprinted in fourth edition, which is a couple years away at this point, which means they were still holding on to anti like Oh, it's gonna ask like, did they reprint it? Yeah, because if, if they reprint it, they keep they kept the exact same text on it, right? 
they yeah one time they reprinted it so what the hell i mean if it's banned it can't be that valuable right i don't know, like i don't ah, 15 bucks 15 dollars yep 16 dollars good job dude let's go huge nailing it oh my gosh that might be the closest we've uh come on a straight up guess i think so i don't know it, it's such a it's a really strange design really strange it and now i got to have my anti talk and i'm very happy <laughs> uh i think in a virtual setting i think it's a it could be a lot more fun like if i was because hearthstone i don't know if magic does this but Harson has these, sometimes they do these things called heroic brawliseums, which is you put up a thousand dollars, thousand dollars, a thousand gold. And like what? I was like, <laughs> if it was a thousand bucks, it'd be insane. But you put up a thousand gold, which is roughly 10 packs in Hearthstone. It is 10 packs, not even roughly. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. But uh, basically, like, if you lose three times, you're out of the brawliseum. But the more you go up to 12 wins, the higher rewards you get. And it is a lot of fun because it adds a competitive aspect to the game because Hearthstone is mainly casual. I wonder what the game would be like, like in Magic, if they had a rule set that was like, you put up a card and that's what you're fighting for and see how popular that game would be. Because I wonder if people would like really appreciate the competitive aspect of it. Now, if you lose your card to a mono red, I mean, you may just uninstall Magic Arena. I'm not sure, but I, I, I might. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it could be Can you imagine the rage quits? Oh, my God. It'd be. It, oh, my God. Probably, you know, in hindsight, maybe they ban mono red. I'm not sure. <laughs> that would you know that i would that would be a price i'd be happy to pay <laughs> that would be nice there's actually okay uh there is a developers have talked about this in hearthstone i don't think they're ever going to do it i think it would be like a bad decision but they've talked about how when you queue up for ladder you can ban a class you don't want to play against um would you pay a premium so that you never have to go against mono red yes what is it take my money <laughs> Yes. Knowing wizards, 10 grand. <laughs> a year or a day? I mean, a, a day would be crazy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, they, I, they, they know how to get money out of whales, dude. Who knows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, it's just interesting to think about because, like, if you did the how the meta game would change so drastically because you wouldn't have to consider, like, mono red and et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know. God, I'm trying to think of what that number would be. The one that wouldn't make me feel stupid, but would be outrageous enough to make me pause, but then I eventually pay it when I'm angry enough. <laughs> Is it like 50 a day? Is it 60 a day? Is it 100 a day? Well, if you think about okay, this is we're going really off tangent here, but think about it. 50 if you're if you have the money, paying $50 a day so you never see mono red again, you would play a lot more magic theoretically, right? So if you really enjoy magic and you think mono red is truly ruining your experiencing uh, your experience in standard like it you know is that is that worth it for you to get your entertainment for magic maybe we gotta right. shut this down we have to <laughs> shut this down because the, the second they get there the, like wizards ears ever hear this i'm going to be broke <laughs> but if you, okay look, we're going up another level here theoretically oh, no. if they do implement this in the game right it'd be like this conversation potentially right so then you could sue them for rights <laughs> and or i don't know your, your property and then the baby they just give you that access for free i would like to say here on uh in public uh, with absolutely no pressure on me whatsoever i i i uh, yeah d d don't don't be mad at me wizards there that's it <laughs> <laughs> i would totally not sue you for taking things I, mm, mm, i'll do how much yeah okay yeah but anyway <laughs> this guy might all right uh cool lawyers let me know do i have a case Jesus. all right <laughs> so on tangent. we gotta get it we gotta get off this it's gonna cause problems it's gonna cause so many problems all right i've shown you some creatures you have some context let's talk about this card nether void uh three neutral one black enchant world okay so this is what in artifacts a land it is an enchantment and enchant world is a new type of enchantment okay all spells cast are countered unless the caster play their caster pays an additional three mana holy shit so an enchant world is basically an enchantment i know stupid but enchantments just sit on the battlefield uh, like artifacts you know they're an effect you put it on the battlefield and it's an effect that applies to some um, part of the game 
Uh, they're a permanent. They stay on the battlefield until removed by a card that specifically removes an enchantment or a permanent. An enchant world is a new type of enchantment. There can only be one enchant world on the entire battlefield at a time. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, does black in this expansion, or I guess with the cards available, have the capabilities of building like an aggro type duck with the creatures? Wait, when you say all spells, is that creatures as well? Yes. Creatures are spells. Wait, this is... Huh? Uh, to answer your question, potentially. Like, but like, hey. is it going to be a beautiful one, two, three curve as you know it? Probably not. It's going to probably be mana cheating early to cast one of those big black creatures. Yeah. And I'm... hope it can run away with the game. Yeah, I got to think about Hearthstone terms here. But I pay four mana to basically say all spells cost an additional three. That's really good. If I can build my deck for that, but I have guaranteed mana, so I don't have to worry about drawing lands and I can get stuff on the board early enough potentially for this to be a really, really good card. That being said, majority of the time, this probably hurts you just as much. And you also are the one paying the, uh, the mana to get this in play. So you would have to really build your deck for this to be so annoying for your opponent, but it doesn't matter nearly as much for you. But I still feel like this hurts you just as much, if not more. Like, I don't know why you would put that. I, obviously, there's there has to be something that was released with this that, like, helps you win the game. Or maybe they just printed this just to be funny. I'm not sure. I, I can't see a world where this is insane. Like, uh, like, good, good. I feel like this is bad. Like, for you specifically, all spells are countered unless they cast. The casters pay an additional three. I mean, the only real circumstance I think this is going to be good is if you have creatures on your board already and then you drop this. So the question is, how likely is that to be the case? I don't know if that's that likely without seeing the rest of the pool. So I'm going to go that this card is bad, but I'm going to take a little bit of a cop out here. Like, I think this card can be broken if you can build a deck for this, but it's, it's really hard to gauge whether or not this card is playable, just depending on what the rest of the cards look like. But I'll go to bad just to give an answer. Okay, I think I'm going to give you full credit on that one because this card is a skill test and it was amazing for pub stomping because people who had like some fast mana like the Moxes or just played with Dark Ritual, Black Lotus would get out one of those black creatures, Zhu Zamjin from Arabian Nights or Hypnotic Spectre, which is a two mana two two that when it hits you, you have to discard a card, which is very mm -hmm. mean. It's a flyer or two. Um, Solkanar, the Swamp King that we covered. They would just basically try to get out one big creature and slam this card. And because a lot of players didn't know how to build decks back then, they just would not be able to cast spells the rest of the game. And it was a very much a pay to win card in that way. Because if you had the best cards, you just played some of those cards that were better rate than your enemies. And then you play this and they never play anything else. I, yeah, I can see that. It, very mean like, <laughs> I, and like i remember when i said that during this period it didn't seem like they really valued the player experience this is a good example of that can you just imagine having to pay three more for every spell yes yeah, every some card some decks just lose right it, it, yeah it, it, and there were there wasn't a lot of understanding of curve that you're supposed to play a one-on-one -on -one, a two-on-two -two, and a three-on-three -three back then there was just a lot of here's my cool cards here's my daca and black blade right here's my nicole bolus yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's so nice of them to print those huge expensive legends that were very with with cool art, <laughs> cool characters that you want to play. In the same set, they give you this one. They 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 give you this. You never get to cast those things. They were expensive already. Just forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, I can see what you like. This is like in, if this was printed in Hearthstone, this would probably be like the most one of the most hated cards in the game. Um, I'm. Yeah, I'm going to get a little flack for saying it was a skill test and that it was actually a pretty bad card at the time. But that is, I think, a good stance to have looking back on the situation. People will swear by this card, but it was very much like, OK, I get ahead because I have superior cards and then this locks it up. Whereas when you played this against somebody on an even setting, if you were like at parity or behind, this card didn't do much other than extend the game longer and longer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's it's what it's not like a, maybe it's described as a win a win more card maybe like it's it's weird because in the right i would describe it it doesn't win at all it's, it's like a just nobody wins in well, a way what i mean is like if you're ahead on board already and then you play this card like you probably won the game like how do they how does your opponent even interact with what you're doing at that point like they're so far behind every single time and you're getting this chip damage from minions that you're or creatures that you already have on board but if you don't have those creatures on board like this card is nothing so like I, it only i think it'd only be considered like a win more card like do, how else do you play this card mm. i don't know it's really yeah. it, really really horrible design like just strictly as a game <laughs> yeah. design like it's it's not it's not fun for anyone like it just makes the overall experience worse with what you, you're, you're describing but most importantly i feel like this is the type of card that would leave such a negative impression on your experience that you wouldn't want to play magic for a little bit or ever come back to it <laughs> like it would be such a detrimental experience that you'd probably be like why like what are they doing like why would they print a card like this and like this is after like what this is like the fourth expansion third expansion so yeah we are on expansion number three so counting the core set we're four sets in so they're they're they've already learned like a little bit i theoretically i guess they it's not the same because they can't get like immediate feedback from like the internet but i don't know that's that's tough that's that's tough this was like probably a big learning experience for them hopefully hopefully <laughs> oh my god i can't <laughs> wait to see what you think of some of these other cards <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, um so Nether Void. What's also really funny, I swear to God, there was somebody in very early game design who just loved keeping everybody from playing magic because this would be an ongoing theme, but this is still a thing. Like there are there is an audience out there for people who just want to stop everybody from playing magic and turn it into whatever this does. <laughs> just uh it is weird. Prison, they call it prison type effects where you just lock everything down. Um anyway. You got some guesses on this card this nether void this enchant world how much it would go did for ever and i'll tell you let me tell you first okay they didn't reprint it's it. on the they oh. did not reprint it okay and it's on the reserve list it cannot be oh, reprinted. okay so this one's actually worth probably more money uh just as a collectible of what was for magic so let's go for like 250. 250. yeah it would go for five hundred and forty-two dollars for a Nether Void. I, I would say, by the way, like out of all the art you showed me so far, I do think this one is the nicest looking. Like, I think the overall like art fits really nicely on the black border of a card. And this is something I would hang on my wall. I don't know if that you would feel the exact same way. I think it looks. Art really is nice. subjective. This looks like a. This reminds me of what's called the <laughs> sandboard on say, arena. No, look, it looks like shit. I don't know why you said that. I hate the sandboard on arena. It reminds me of the sandboard on arena. Maybe you'll learn someday. I think it looks pretty nice. I don't know. I like it. I like the, it's like a dragon or something that's like coming out, or like a big lizard. I don't know. Let's keep the fun designs coming. Moat. Okay. Uh, two neutral, two white. Non-flying creatures cannot attack. Okay. <laughs> so this is a, this is an enchantment. Uh -huh. Wow. That's just it's just it's right to the point. Just <laughs> fuck your fuck your non-flying creatures. <laughs> wow, that is, dude. Okay, I know in the context of magic currently, you said creatures are generally just not great. But imagine you're paying like so much money for let me go back in time here real fast for him. It was Bolas flying. He was flying. Okay. Yeah. For uh the Swamp Deck King. Of Black Blade. The Swamp yeah. King, sure. He is and you're like, yeah, I just spent all my mana for that card. I can't wait to play it and attack with it. And then they play this. Hell, let's go back to Colossus of Sardia. The nine nine for nine. <laughs> yeah, it's like you play your big meatball. You're so excited to swing with it because one of the best feelings in Hearthstone is when you attack with the big minion because like the you you hear like you feel the noise is how I'm gonna describe it because it just feels so good to swing with it and they play moat and you're like okay I guess I'm just not playing this game anymore because this card is again it's like a, it's almost like uh nether void but this is actually probably even worse to play against sometimes just because this might just stop your entire win condition like they if they don't have a card in your deck that says or their deck sorry that says destroy an enchantment and their entire win condition is based off creatures that don't fly like how do they win the game like they're just gonna sit there like you just have to get up and lose you lose your ante as well potentially right so i don't know man i feel like this was good 
like this is a good card it's not that expensive it doesn't hurt you whatsoever because you can build your deck for this i obviously don't know what flying creatures white had at the time but this is a card that can single-handedly win you the game so i'm sure this card was played this card is busted okay <laughs> it's so good <laughs> It was so good back in the day. They didn't know what to do when it hit the battlefield. Oh, my God. That's, that's... I, uh, it. Remember when I told you about my library of Alexandria that just nobody knew? Like, I had it. They didn't. And yep. I just got to laugh at them. Yeah, moat was like that, too. You just slam a moat, and they look at you like, huh? <laughs> what? Yeah, if I played this today against my wife who i've been teaching commander for the last few years she would quit the game like if she would I be gone don't out the door whatsoever dude this is gross this is a gross <laughs> card there, this is like oh my god yeah it would be especially in the early days of hearts why did they design these cards what the fuck another are they doing? beautiful piece of designing for the gamer experience maybe for this set they were like okay we're gonna really try some stupid stuff and see what sticks and what doesn't like what, what we can design for because I, I don't know the logic behind this card, but it is. Yeah, it probably shouldn't be printed. This card would be banned, I think, in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's how atrocious this Ooh. card is. And Yu-Gi-Oh has some pretty fucked cards. <laughs> like, that's wild. All righty. This card is on the reserved list. It cannot be reprinted. Um, so it's only here in Legends. How so much would you pay for a moat? Okay, if Nether Void was 500 and Moat's a better card than it, uh, but it's not a black card, it's a white card. I'm still going to go for like 750 $750? Yeah. You can get a Moat for $1,090. <sighs> 1090. Wow. You can you can you can probably get a real Moat around my house for about that much. <laughs> probably less. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, is this card legal in any format? This is legal in Commander. It's also legal in Legacy and Vintage. But oh. Commander is the one where I'm pretty sure if you play this, you're gonna get like run out of the store. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah, you'd you'd be banned. They'd put a moat just for you. Hmm. Yep, There's, yep. That's disgusting. I and and the interesting part, I didn't get it ready for this video. It's it's over there in a binder. I have a moat a real one you get a great right right here right here in this uh dojo of mine and every week when i make my commander video i just i wonder if today's the day <laughs> i can't wait to see what's after this mana drain oh god two blue counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase add x to your mana pool where x is the casting cost of the target spell that's broken that's insane I don't even have to review this card. It'd be played in every, like, if this card was in Hearthstone, it'd be run in every single deck it could be played in. There is some context you need. Oh. <laughs> the, the rules of magic have changed over the oh, years, as okay. we kind of revealed. Okay. Back in the day, if you had mana left in your mana pool that you did not use, you did what was called mana burning. You took one damage for every mana you didn't use. The turn when you get okay, when you go back to your main phase you have a bunch more mana and then potentially you take damage because you can't spend all that mana that's what you're saying yep I, listen i'm gonna be honest with you i'm sure that was sometimes really relevant but most of the time i wouldn't give a shit <laughs> i think this is broken i think i would play if this card said to me next turn in hearthstone take one damage for each unspent mana you had i would still play this card so this broken is, this is an instant right it is yeah broken yeah, this card's okay. fucking busted, dude. <laughs> it's so good. Dude, I, <laughs> they, I, sorry, I was gonna let me just pop off for a second here. Who cares about taking an extra point of damage? Because if you're putting mana drain into your deck, you could decide whether or not you want to counter a spell regardless. But also, if you have the mana to spend the following turn, this, this card is insane. Like, arguably, this might be the best card you've ever shown me. Like, this is mm -hmm. this this card is nuts. This card's nuts. Sorry, continue. <laughs> no, you're right. Uh, and what was it was really funny because back then counter spell was a real card. Counter spell is an iconic magic card. It's just blue, blue counter target spell. Incredibly popular card um, that would eventually like they reprinted it a bunch of times in early magic and then they stopped reprinting it because it was too powerful. The idea of mana drain was that it was balanced around like use if they don't use that mana, you take a ton of damage. 
What a crazy <laughs> idea that was. By the way, the other cards I've shown you so far are rares. Mana yeah. Drain is an uncommon. Oh, so it's more popular. Yeah, it was it was easier to get. It was in theory cheaper. It, it it's yeah, insane. That's a great card. Insane card. card. You know what? Honestly, that might be the best card I've seen in any card game. Like I I this isn't this is a really broken card. Like if you're maybe not in Yu-Gi-Oh because Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have a mana resource system, but like in Hearthstone this would be it would have to be nerfed like almost like the day it was printed. Yeah, the the mana you get is colorless, so it can only pay generic costs, but still that's just not like none of these things seem to matter when mana drain happens. Uh it it really happens. Dude, it's, and this is a great this is mana cheating, but like you also get to defend your. This is gross. Like I hate looking. Get it off my screen. Yeah, in one v one, it's that disgusting. This card is not on the reserve list because it's an uncommon. Only rares got put on the reserve list. Is it reprinted though? Yes. Oh, it's what? been reprinted. It's been reprinted six times. Five times. Five or six times. The important thing to know is that these reprintings were in commander sets. These are not standard legal reprintings. They were print, reprinting specifically made to go into commander because this card is very popular in commander. Very popular. Oh, it's okay. I'm going to go with like probably for this one, like 250. If they reprint 250? It some, yeah. I mean, this for is, an, yeah. Yeah, I think 250 is fair. I don't know. It's, it's really tough because I think owning this card like the original would be like a huge flex because of how good it was. <laughs> but God, I loved my copies. <laughs> what happened to your copies? I sold them at some point. A lot of these old cards I had, but I sold when I went to college to okay. pay for yeah. college. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But my God, did I love my mana drains. This card is oh. not... pretty so, disgusting. The card's current median price is two hundred dollars. The card sold for $250 as recently as March of last year. Okay. So it was $250 one year ago. All right, so, I'll take it. Good job. Not bad. Thank you. Thank I, you. I found an easy way to pull up price history so I can even give you credit if it like sold recently for that amount. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, we're, you're really getting there now. Gaming. Let's go. Man, a freaking drain, baby. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty nice. It might Jeez. be the best card I ever showed you. It might be. It legitimately has. It's up there for sure. Top three. I, I try to think of other cards I would. I would think would be. I mean, Shiro's ad's the best card I've ever seen. So that's number one. What the fuck is this art? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. You're not gonna put that on your wall. Obviously, I'm putting that on my wall. <laughs> okay. Land tax for one white. This is an enchantment. During your upkeep, if your opponent controls more land than you, you may search your library and remove up to three basic land cards. Put them into your hand and reshuffle your library. Holy shit. Um, God, that sounds really good. For one white, you could just, if you're going second, you just, your opponent, you, you, put, your la you put your land down, you play this card. Your opponent goes, then your opponent gets a turn. They play another land, and then you could use this effect every upkeep as long as they keep playing lands. Isn't that just broken? <laughs> like, am I, am I missing this text as well? That, if you're going second, this is game winning on itself, because that's insane. Um, if you're going first, I mean, you could just skip a land, but that doesn't sound optimal. So 50% of the time, you're you're doing really well. I mean, I'm going to be honest. This card also seems very strong. I'm sure this was banned as well because it seems very good. Yeah, land tax is a very good card. Interestingly, <laughs> took a while to catch on. Um, it really? Was, yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't like right away. It wasn't right away. In fact, they, I, I would say when it first came out, I didn't see it at all uh, pre what we'll call fourth edition in like the early days of Pro Magic. I didn't see it anywhere. And then it got reprinted into fourth edition and it did get played a lot uh in the future and it when people did figure it out like they really figured it out at some point this card was restricted i think it was even banned for a period of time yeah. i want to tell you about the kind of game states that this creates so i've already shown you nether void 
which yeah. is things pay three more. So lands are really valuable. Access to a whole bunch of land, if you can picture that with Nether Void, is like kind of like, oh, if you have land tax with the Nether Void, then you have way more land than the opponent. If you get even one activation off this, means a big advantage in that scenario, right? Right. Do you also remember some of the other cards I've shown you in the past? Like Strip Mine, Sacrifice It to Destroy Target Land, a yes. land that just blows up another oh, land. Oh, yeah. Oh. This, so this card turned into the weirdest games. And what would happen often is somebody would play this card. And again, since the format wasn't super fast and creatures weren't that good, and there were a lot of ways to nerf creatures, like it was all about this resource accumulation. So if you play a land tax on turn two, like you were saying, it was often, and it would happen often, opponent just doesn't play a land and you just stare at each other. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> go, yeah. So just go to end step, discard to hand size because you can only have a max of seven and you have to discard a card. And players just stare at each other until somebody thinks they can like get enough of an advantage by breaking the land tax standoff that somebody does something. Yeah, that's... Dude, that's a. This, it's the, so bad. The design philosophies here are crazy. That's really. It, it was toxic, man. It was it was a horrible gaming experience. And then, of course, if you just play into it, your opponent's gonna have all this land. They pile the lands into their hand. They usually end up discarding the hand size, but it was still a thing to just get the lands out of your deck. So you picture one of the disadvantages of Magic versus Hearthstone, right? Is you've got all these lands in your deck. If you draw them at the wrong time right yeah it's not a good draw well if you get all the land out of your deck yeah you're just always drawing good it's exactly crazy. It's crazy. no it's it yeah no I, dude I, I don't know that's a i mean i just said manage rate might be the best card you showed me that's uh it's a pretty nuts card for one white that's really that's insane that's uh yep. there's something they learned from this they didn't reprint this card did they this card is currently on mtg arena oh <laughs> But is it good? It's, it's only it's legal in two formats, timeless and historic brawl. In timeless, it's not very good because timeless is a pop off and win combo format. Yeah, picture like wild for Hearthstone. Yeah. Like, but like really insanely pushed. And brawl, it's pretty good. Like if you you I've had land tax standoffs like I discussed in Brawl where the opponent just refused to move because they wouldn't give me the lands. <laughs> uh, so That's... it's like <laughs> It's a thing, man. It's really funny to do on Arena because it's like, okay, how long can we do this? That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, this card is is absolutely bonkers. Just another example of like these cheap resources that continue to provide no incentives to play creatures, really. Like when you can just do stuff like this. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I mean, it's fucked up. I'd say you can you can say how much it could, how much you'd pay for an original copy of land tax you can say that was it was it reprinted it's been reprinted a good number like into into just a set like a set set for standard it was only reprinted once in fourth edition then it was reprinted for a commander set and it was reprinted in a bonus sheet without going too deep they're not legal in standard all right let's go for like Oh, that's i don't know um one 170. 170 for an original land tax it might be the, more just because the, cur <laughs> the current medium price is 64 dollars ah interesting yep yep it, this one is it's way better in standard it's way better in smaller formats. The bigger the format gets, there are two big drawbacks to the card. One, it operates kind of slowly. Obviously, if you don't get time to play all those lands, they don't really matter, right? Right. And so if it's a combo pop-off format, like often having three or four lands in your hand isn't the difference in the game. You only get to play one a turn. The other thing that holds this back is it's only basic lands. And as magic has become bigger, non-basic oh, lands have become better. So fetching basic lands in particular is less useful in a shorter game, whereas non-basic lands become very powerful and you want to get more of them in your deck. Makes sense. That that makes a little bit more sense why they decided to reprint it, because I was like, why would they keep reprinting a card that like basically stops the game from happening? 
I love that this card exists in Brawl because there are a lot of people on my videos who leave me comments. They don't understand why I play land tax. They don't think it's good because they're so used to like curve out meta. So if they're going first and they play this, like it doesn't do anything. And I'm like, you guys don't know. You don't know. How <laughs> you don't, you haven't been in the trenches of just play turn one land tax and stare at each other. It only, right? Yeah, it takes one bad experience to realize what this card can do. You know, that's that's what it is. Most people will not realize that they'll live in ignorance, which is for the best. I wish I can replace or remove this card from my mind. But you know, taxes. <laughs> that's what it is. Let's continue to prioritize the gamer experience, okay? I love that. The abyss. Oh god. Okay. Three neutral, one black, another enchant world. All players bury one target non-artifact creature under their control if they have any during their upkeep. If you play a big minion. That's not an artifact. And then I played this minion. On, I played this on the following turn. That big minion you have to sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> and that happens multiple times. Okay. Oh yeah, play another big minion. See what happens. I mean, oh God, that seems removal every turn. And again, this is a card that you could build around because you just put artifact creatures into your deck if you want to play them. So you just, as long as you get this card, this is a good card. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> like, I know it's not the deepest analysis, but I love the reaction. Yeah, I love the reaction. The last three cards, oh, maybe not, maybe not mana drain, but, but definitely mode, uh, land tax and the abyss all say basically the following line is like, if you're, if you build your deck around this, you probably win the game. It's, it's like, a lot of big middle fingers to creature lovers, isn't like, it? It's it's uh, it's an experience. But also, that's disgusting. Like, like what is? The, I, I, how many of these cards do you think it takes before they figure out that like like they're just making creatures completely irrelevant and unplayable? Right? I mean, I, it's it's insane. So it, it's weird because okay, I'm gonna give I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. Okay, this is 1994. What feedback could you realistically get from your card game in 1994? People mailing in letters telling you, you how the hell did you guys create land tax, right? Like it would be very far and few between like you'd actually get real reviews of like what your game is doing, right? Because in their mind, as long as you're buying the cards, like who cares, right? Like, like if you bought the cards already, you already got the merchandise, right? Nowadays, let's say these cards actually came out and this is the start of magic you that i don't know how this game would survive if they kept printing cards like this so my only my only hope here is that as we continue going through expansions you show me cards that are better designed than <laughs> hey you just win the game if you build for this so i would hope that they would look at the designs they're having and maybe there was tournaments and the, like they would see like oh like people really don't like this card for this reason so let's try to not build cards like this does that actually happen? I have no idea. I can only really base this off Hearthstone and Hearthstone still does the thing of like, oh, this was really bad to play against. Let's not do this again. Then they reprint it years later in a different version. So it's like, does magic learn from this? I don't know. I don't have to wait and see. I don't know how they, I don't know. I mean, well, they don't make them, they don't make them like this anymore. There's so definitely- At least they learned. Ooh, eventually, eventually. <laughs> like 30 years later they don't make them like this anymore uh it, it is kind of i i do love this because people look at everything like in the past it was better right false false false, false. false. i love showing you cards like these mainly for the reaction obviously it's an insanely stupid card but yeah. the just for the boomers out there who are like oh god i remember back in the day when this and this is like, no, we we had our opponents casting the abyss and yeah. just making sure that we never played a creature. They mana drained our big spell. They used the mana to cast the motherfucking abyss. See, it, it sucked. Hearthstone's only been out for 10 years, man. And people think that like the early days of Hearthstone were like the best moments of Hearthstone. And I don't think like, I think the basic set of Hearthstone is really well designed because they knew every interaction in the game. But like the mistakes and the card designs that they made in the early days of Hearthstone, some of them are atrocious. And if they printed them today, people would give them so much flack for it. But then you have those people who are like, oh, it was so much better in the early days. Don't you remember? But they're looking at the their, their old times with nostalgia, with rose colored glasses, only remembering the good moments when there's so much dog shit in these games. 
and I can't even imagine in Magic after showing me these cards. Holy shit! But it's this. Yeah. I will say, sorry, I gotta revert. I gotta. I gotta defend one game here. One game, as far as I'm concerned, which is Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh. As much as it probably had ridiculous cards in in the early days of the game. I think a lot of people really remember Yu-Gi-Oh as the best parts of what Yu-Gi-Oh is because the game wasn't just insanely complicated like it is now. So maybe Yu-Gi-Oh is the only exception, but my God. Okay, sorry, continue what were you saying? <laughs> wow, did you say a nice thing about Yu-Gi-Oh? I, I, are you I, a known Yu-Gi-Oh hater? <laughs> I have to give credit where credit's due. I think uh, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh was in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh when the game was just about summoning creatures or like playing big monsters and maybe like killing them with trap cards. I feel like that's when Yu-Gi-Oh peaked. Well, so i don't know i i love that just the <laughs> nostalgia you know nostalgia is it's fine it's nice to enjoy nostalgia it's important not to take it as like the lesson or the mission to go back and do exactly that thing again because often it sucked way more than you remember yeah I'll, it's it's the same thing with like tv shows and stuff right like sometimes like i have movies that i know are really bad but when i was younger i was like oh i really like this movie but if I rewatch it now, I'm going to be like, uh, well, it wasn't good. So like, maybe I just liked it because it was dumb and I didn't really understand. Um, and you can say the same thing that happens a ton of things with card games, right? So mm -hmm. I don't know. Nostalgia is interesting, but cards like the abyss make me not would make me not remember magic fondly. I would remember that more than like the good moments. Agreed. So. Agreed. Now here's something that people might have fond or unfond memories of mirror universe what a the arts are crazy in this six neutral mana so if you tap this you sacrifice during your upkeep and trade your number of life points with your opponent for example if you had two life points in your opponent at 10 you would now have 10 life points and your opponent would have two man if they didn't explain that i think i'd be lost next that prevent or redirect damage may not be used to counter the change of life this is a really interesting card um, the problem with this card is unless this card is guaranteed going to win you the game, I think it's unplayable. Uh, and I'll give you like a good example of this, at least from Hearthstone. Hearthstone has a card called Ice Block. Have I shown you Ice Block before? You've told me about it, but yeah. you have not shown it to so me. So Ice Block is a three mana secret for mage that, uh, when you would have died, it prevents the damage and you can no longer be damaged for the rest of your opponent's turn which means you guarantee you get to live one turn, okay? But the really good thing about Ice Block is that it's three mana that you can put way before you're probably gonna die to your opponent. This card is six mana, and you have to pray to God your opponent still doesn't just kill you the following turn, um, which is probably at that point gonna be very, very, very unlikely. And even if it, you don't die the next turn, your next turn has to be really insane for this card to make up for the loss of mana that you just spent on this card. So I think this card's bad without seeing the context of the rest of the cards. I think this is a horrible card. I wouldn't see play. I will give you one more bit of context okay. because back then the rules were different. Oh, okay. back then you could go to negative life and you didn't actually die until the end of the phase. So you go to negative life, you swap to your opponents, you swap health with your opponents, and then the end of your turn happens and then they would die? Mm-hmm. The end of the phase, not the end of the turn. So you would have to like the end of your upkeep to basically change your life total in a way that you would not die. Okay, yeah, that's pretty broken. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> like that's that seems really nuts. Oh, no. How do you go into negative health? Well, I may have described something to you a little earlier in the video discussing mana drain about a, Ooh, a little right. piece of the rules called mana burn. So mana burn is just a way better card. If you made <laughs> mana with and didn't use it, you took one damage for the mana. God, that's really tough. Oh, uh, man, I, I, I still think it's bad, but I mean, that's a pretty sick win condition. I'm not going to lie to you. If I lost that way, I'd be like, holy shit. I was, that was pretty incredible. I don't know, man. Mana, mana drains a really good card. If you could set that up like pretty consistently, this is a good way to win the game. Because how does your opponent interact with this? They can't, right? They just lose. Like if this is played it's and you go to negative health, they just the game's over. 
You do have to do it during your upkeep, which means it's on the board for a whole turn cycle before you get to do it, because the upkeep happens at the beginning of the turn. Okay, fair enough. I ah God, I I'm still gonna say it's bad. I'm still gonna say it's bad. I think that's not likely enough to happen. This card is the only legitimate win condition I've shown you today. <laughs> Oh, okay. Because th there was just nothing else you could do to kill somebody. I All the other cards I've shown you, right, basically, like, mean you can't kill them. Creatures are irrelevant, right? They yeah. just mess up creatures. This was one of the only things you could do. There were not many win cons to people who knew how to play the game and what was going on, and this was one of them. You would play Mirror Universe. The turn cycle would go around. It would come back to you. You would mana burn, go to a negative life total, sacrifice Mirror Universe, trade life points, you win. That's a pretty great experience. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I would agree that in so many ways, this is bad. Like by every like type of modern analysis, this is bad. In the day, this was the win. It's, this was like yeah. a, re a win con you could actually rely on. It's it's really tough because I think like my my 2024 brain makes me think that this is unplayable because I feel like there's just better ways of winning the game, right? That's usually what it comes down to with these weird ass win conditions. Yeah. But if you're telling me like this is the only way to win the game or one of the few ways, then like this, the stonks on this card go infinitely up. So yeah, it makes sense why this card would be good. It's that's, that's a really tough card to evaluate because it really depends on what the meta game is looking like. But I guess if people are not efficient yet, you could this is like a win condition that's probably more obvious than other ones. So it ends up being a lot better. I, that's, that's a cool win condition. I'd rather die to this than lose to the abyss and be like, well, why the fuck am I playing this game? So. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on now. Let's be real. We play the abyss and then 20 turns later, we pull this off. <laughs> that's also true. That's also true. It's just, it's like delayed BM. I don't know how to describe it. Like you're just delayed. It's so fun. Okay, anyways, anyways. It, it's so bad. Back in the day, this my deck <laughs> did have Mirror Universe and Moat and Mana Drain and the Abyss. And that was like what we did here. Oh that was how God. we got down with Magic the Gathering back in the day. I don't know how you're still day. playing this. I don't know how I, you're <laughs> it really helped that I owned these cards and other people didn't. And back then they oh, weren't that they weren't okay. this expensive, but they were hard to find. And they were expensive for the time, you know, as a kid. Like I had to work a lot of jobs to get to get these stupid cards. Yeah. <gasps> Pay to win. <laughs> it, yeah, I basically paid to win from the get-go. I, I hustled for it, but it was still like other other kids weren't buying these cards. They were trying to win with Crawworm, 6-4, no text. You know, it's like six mana, 6-4. And it's like, oh, that's cute. I have the Abyss. <laughs> <laughs> I still do person. have a copy of Mirror Universe over in my binder. Um, nice. Which I, I bought it years later. I didn't keep it from back in the day. It's not the one I mana burn switched with people. By the way, mana burn no longer exists. Nowadays, extra mana just kind of dissipates and nothing happens. So you can't win with Mirror Universe like you used to. I have it just for nostalgia. I see. So how much do you think it's worth? 80 bucks. 80 bucks for Mirror Universe? Yep. Dude, I, I don't think there has been a card that I've talked about today that more says like the nostalgia factor on price than this because i don't know where anybody would ever play this card but it's currently selling for 700 dollars. damn i know wow you, you make it seem like it's unplayable now so yeah you're literally holding it for like on like the nostalgia factor but i guess nostalgia I, matters a lot right i guess the median price over a year is like 487 dollars, but still that's way higher than i would yeah, that's thought. pretty impressive like it really is wow it's, it's yeah um so are you enjoying your like tour of all the torture in magic the gathering well, hey i'm not i'm not the one getting tortured i'm just like a bystander so i'm okay this is fun <laughs> good 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 love that let's try this one the tabernacle at pendril Vale. all creatures now require wait this has doesn't even have a cost all creatures it's a land oh sorry you're right it's a legendary land all creatures now require an upkeep cost of one in addition to any other upkeep costs they will have. So this is one extra mana for every creature. Yep. Every creature you have on the board, every upkeep start of your turn, you have to the pay one. Cost the creature is not paid. The creature is What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? That's so gross. Buddy, what is this? <laughs> like, 
your your opponents are playing checkers you're playing chess with this this is fucked this is miserable and then they have to be like man if they only have enough mana to save one creature they have to be like oh which one do i save like what's one's more important dude this is game ruining experience and it's broken absolutely broken huh yeah oh it, you're gonna tell me it's not it's a legendary land so you can only have one of them on the field and <laughs> are you saying one is all you need one is all you need what are you talking about <laughs> dude if you put this in city tax in the game like it's it's cooked like what is your what does your opponent do like there it'd be it'd be because you could play like you play your land you play the city tax with it the next turn you just play this card and then like your opponent is literally crying their eyes out asking themselves why they even put money into this game i think it's broken i think it's insane this card is another just another beautiful example of how much they hated people who play creatures they just hated them they hated them this deeply is this is very gross. i cannot believe the number of cards in this set when i was looking through this uh set for cards to show you i basically ran into two types of cards overpriced useless legends creatures that the set is like built around it's called legends and those are the cool thing in the set right made right. to sell the set and cards that were just toxic as fuck <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it like like it was a it was actually a big conundrum on what to show you so i went for the just holy shit factor and you have not disappointed <laughs> it's i don't like i don't know i feel like recently i have i've been oh, how do i describe this uh i've been shown a lot more bullshit, right pro card games mm -hmm. just because i've you know i've played more Yu Gi Oh, i've seen magic cards i've seen other games what they're capable of doing and hearthstone of course has its you know its own share of it the cards you're showing me today are just horrible like it's just it 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 looks bad and it actually blows my mind that magic is as successful as it currently is i just like after seeing these cards because this is a set where I'd be like, hey, why am I still playing this game? Yeah. Um, I, and people are genuinely excited when you talk about Legends. Like, they, like, when you talk about the set Legends, people are like, ooh, like, it's got like that kind of mystical factor. And I don't know. I feel like we have to expose it for, for the scum. It should be canceled. Legends should be canceled. That's, that's <laughs> the bottom line. The crimes that these cards committed back in the day imagine how big magic would be if it had been fun to play in its first several <laughs> years it's actually okay no but it's actually like the reverse of Yu-Gi-Oh. like legit I, I i think one of the reasons why Yu-Gi-Oh is so successful is because the game was legitimately fun to play like in its inception right i don't know how magic pulled through maybe it was just because it was the only card game at the time but this is it, it's it's crazy like it actually is crazy that it's managed to make it itself so big after all these years what this is how much do you think people would pay to inflict tabernacle at pendril veil which by the way as a land you can just play on turn one so nice aggro deck <laughs> is this uh is this legal in any format so good good you're asking these questions um it is part of the reserve list it was never reprinted it good. is currently legal in legacy vintage those are just boomer formats and it is legal in commander people actually play this in commander what an interesting they, question they do need, you think they play they this need, in commander i well if they're really trying to win <laughs> then yeah because that's fucked up um that's a game winner right there i'm pretty sure but uh, i think you're you're not gonna have any friends anymore so um i'd probably pay like 500 for that if i truly wanted to play it i don't know it's that's tough because I, I think it really comes down to the specific person but i, I feel like it's probably worth around that this price more than anything in magic in my opinion says just how much we love to destroy people i don't know two thousand seven hundred and seven dollars is the current price for this card so that must mean that this card is actually still so powerful till this day Mm -hmm. and people are willing to spend that much money because they know if they play that in their commander game they're probably winning the game by a mile the most expensive card today yeah 
I, I don't even, I've never seen one in Commander because Good. again, like you said, if you play it, you have no friends. They, they're they done with you. See, it was it was interesting because I was talking to, uh, I think it was my chat yesterday, I was playing Magic. And, uh, someone asked me like, something about Commander, like how do you feel about like someone trying to win a Commander? And I think my response was something like, I think if you're playing Commander, you're there for the experience and like the people around you, right? Like the game is just a vehicle for you guys to have fun with one another. Right, that's my logic, but I don't think you're playing commander to win. I, that's just me as a player, though. So, this is the type of shit where, like, y you're probably not a very liked person, like, personally in your friend group, if you're probably dropping this on the regular. Now, is that happening? Probably not. But, like, I mean, this is a trump card, right? If you really wanted to win, here you go. Dude, I don't know. Are they just driving up the price? Because obviously, small print run reserve list, but that's been true for a number of cards we saw today. Are they just driving up? the price of these people who are like getting these and being like i'm just waiting for an excuse man i'm just waiting for the day <laughs> that they all piss me off and i can come in and drop the tabernacle <laughs> hammer on them because you're not doing this every week like when, nobody would put up no, with that no 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 this is when like you're losing you've lost 10 sessions in a row the alcohol is finally getting to you you didn't sleep that night and you just need to win just to feel something mm -hmm. Oh, you have that deck in the in the box? Yeah, like, okay, like that's it, that's, we're going, that's we're going the, nuclear, nuclear yeah. option. <laughs> that's like the radiation symbol on the deck box. Like, this is it. This is the day. I'm the, I'm fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any final thoughts about Legends? This game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Best game in the world. I actually, I, again, I am very surprised that it's this successful. <laughs> after seeing this set like i mean the other sets are like there's some egregious stuff in this but this is like the definition of egregious this is some crazy 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 cards in this oh uh, well thank you for hanging out and looking at this absolute pile of toxicity if you have some cards i should have shown raren that he would have enjoyed more leave what cards those are in the comments maybe i'll even do it at some point and thanks for joining me